Happy Saturday. It is week eight of 2020. The word for the week, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a teenage word for the week, so maybe you can help me with this. The word for the week this week that someone suggested to me is the word fleek. I looked it up online and found some, some various references. This one right here from vocabulary.com. Apparently it's used like on fleek. This would be weird for me to say something like that. If one girl said to another girl, hey, your eyebrows are on fleek. It's like on point. They look really good. So the, that's, that's a phrase that I'm, I'm certain that if I were to start using fleek around the house quite often, I'd get a lot of eyes rolling. Oh, dad, please stop. It's I guess it's been around since like 2014. So it's a six-year-old word. I, I mentioned it actually on a call with my my team at work some of them are like oh yeah i've heard that and others are like no i've never heard that and so some of them started looking it up and apparently there's some alternate definitions out there that are not so great as with most slang look that up at your own risk then is what i guess i'm saying it has been a fun week a holiday on monday was uh president's day i trimmed toby and gave him a, a haircut toby is our Shizu Poodle. Tuesday recorded a podcast with my friend Dirk, a couple of friends of his that he brought over to do some podcast recording. Wednesday evening, Zach and Brian went to the youth group at church. Ben and I, we sat home and played some cards together. That was fun, playing uh, Spite and Malice. I guess I, I probably ought to do a little video about how that card game is played. I know looking back on card games that, that I used to play with my grandparents and with my parents, I couldn't tell you how any of them are played today. So so, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, it might be kind of neat to look back and, and see, oh yeah, that's that's what that game was. That's how we played that. This week, as far as curiosity is concerned, we had a lot of fun watching a bunch of uh, Destin's videos, Smarter Every Day. Wonderful YouTube guy down there in, I believe he's in Huntsville, Alabama. This week when I met with my friend Paul for, for lunch, I had mentioned something about water in the Northern Hemisphere goes down the drain one particular direction and in the southern hemisphere it goes down the other direction we had a little question about whether or not that was true or if it was just something that we believed to be true even earlier in the week i had been looking at various things from smarter everyday channel i was not surprised to find out that destin had already done a video on that and i'll, I'll put a link in this video here to the the one if you're curious about that because it is actually true it, it's true but it's not consistent. It's not such a strong force that it can force all water to go down all drains in a certain direction depending on the, the hemisphere, but it is such a force that it causes hurricanes to go one direction and cyclones, which is in the southern hemisphere's version of, of hurricanes, to go the opposite direction. So that was that was very interesting and a lot of fun to, to look it up. Oh, another fun video that I watched of Destin's about, you know, when water droplets drop on um, puddles and sometimes they'll dance across the top of the puddle before they coalesce, become a part of the puddle. He had a video on that and he also talked to a guy who was an astronaut who had been studying that same thing but studied it in space. There was a really cool point in that when he shows that, I mean, because in space water bubbles up rather than puddling because of no gravity. So it bubbles up and he had an air pocket inside the water bubble and when he played different types of music it did different things and the vibrations were on the inside on the water. And when he played cello music it was really cool because little particles broke off off inside of there and they started floating from side to side inside the, the bubble of water inside the air. It was, I'm, I'm not describing it very well, but it was so cool and it's well worth watching. Thursday, we had some light snow. I was surprised because I didn't realize that there was snow in the forecast. And Thursday morning, we woke up to a little snow on the ground. Of course, that was melted by the end of the day. Did a little bit of drawing, um, drawing, doodling, sketching, messing around with markers. Last night, Friday night, we went over to a friend's house. They have their son is in town. He's in the Marine Corps now and is out on the West Coast. And so he was in town to visit. And this is a family that we've known for 14 years or longer, maybe? Yeah, somewhere around in there. We've known them since their kids were, our kids and their kids were little together. It's amazing when you think of time because I, I feel like it was 
a million years ago that all the kids were little and now they're all teenagers and some in their 20s now. It's just weird. I, I don't feel that old. And they think of us as much older than we are. Well, me anyway. Jill always has been thought of as being at least 10 years younger than she actually is. In fact, I remember a story of when we were newly married. We were doing a skit at church and we're up there on stage. A friend of ours' mother knew Jill but didn't know me. She, you know, looked at her her daughter and said, why, why is Jill up there on that stage with that man? Because we were doing a skit about being married. And she thought that Jill was the teenager and thought that I was some old guy. And I'm actually five months younger than Jill. <laughs> Ben has been coming home and talking about this book at, at, that they've been doing at school called Scythe, I think it is. Um, he couldn't remember who the author was. Kind of a weird book, the way he's describing it to me, but not so sure it's something that I would enjoy, but the kids are enjoying it. Zach said he's read it before, too. So, uh, so yeah, this is the eighth week of 2020. It's February. We are now 26 days until spring. In fact, it's 26 days, 8 hours, 39 minutes, and 2 seconds, 1 second zero second. <laughs> we'll see you next week.